writing. If you look in the <coughs> Word this morning, in um, the book of Revelation, I won't go there for a moment. If you'll allow me this morning, it'll be a great thing. Revelation 19. <laughs> Revelation 19. I had a uh, good uh, time with the Lord over this one. So it'll be a good thing. He obviously wants to speak to us here and uh, speak to us beyond here. So we need to do that our Father's business. If you look at Revelation 19 this morning, we'll begin in verse 11. Please stand with me if you're able to as we read God's holy word together. Starting in verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are blazing like fire. And on his head are many crowns. Wow. His eyes are like blazing fire. Look back at that. And he has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven are following him, riding on white horses dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword, which is to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has this written, King of kings, Lord of lords. Thank you. Please be seated. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that it is sharpened in two edges of sword able to reach the heart of man. I pray for each soul here this morning that we, in this passage, will see the love of God. Amen. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I had another passage all ready to rock and roll this morning, but the Lord kept steering me back to this. We were wrapping up the study of the book of Revelation on Wednesday evenings. And we had 45, I think, this past Wednesday, and uh, we've had a great turnout on uh, Thursday mornings as well, so if you're available on Wednesday evening uh, by 6.30, we do a dinner of course, but if you're able to get here, we'd love to have you, and on Thursday morning, we also meet um, at 10 o'clock, we have 12 folks here Thursday morning, so it's great, God's uh, word is sharper. And God, through His Word, is calling people into Himself. We didn't understand that. And it's through circumstance. It's through circumstance. I don't know what circumstance you find yourself in this morning. I don't know if it's the world that's brought you that, or you've done that to yourself. It doesn't really matter to God. From the standpoint, He wants to reach you. I was in my 30s before I ever really fully started fathoming the love of Almighty God. Uh, my mom's a sweet lady. Uh, I grew up, uh, you know, and I knew my mom and dad loved me. They're about the only two folks that could at the time, but I knew they loved me. But by the same token, for me to understand the love of God, it took me a while. I don't know about you. I don't know where you are this morning. It may take you a while, but hey, let's, let's address that this morning. But we have to see the truth of God before we can start understanding the love of God. See, so many of us have these concepts of God that aren't accurate at all. Because of how you were raised, or someone did something to you, or just bad things happen to good people, particularly children. And we look back in our lives and we wonder, you know, Lord, where were you? And yet He was the one that never abandoned you. He was the one that was there even in the pain. He was there even in the suffering. He was the one there sustaining you and keeping you. And amen. And that's why we need to bow before Him. And there is coming a day that you see in Revelation 19. And we need to understand a little bit about that today. I don't want you to leave here today thinking Jesus is some nice fellow. I don't want you leaving here today thinking, well, Jesus is just uh, warm and fuzzy and He's just a sweetie and all of that. I want you to see Him for who He is. And you'll understand that God is love. You'll have a greater understanding that God is love. And then uh, 
folks that were baptized uh, last week, our young ladies, and we'll baptize again this month, so you be in prayer for that. And if you have a decision to make for Jesus Christ today and have not decided to follow Him, take care of that today. And we will be baptizing a few Sundays from now. I want you to look at the passage here this morning. John, the apostle, writes, and John is suffering. He's on the Isle of Patmos, if you don't know the story. And he's on the Isle of Patmos, and he has been sent there by the Roman emperor to die, hopefully of leprosy. It's a leper colony on that rocky little island in the Aegean Sea. And he's, the emperor is going to punish John because John would not bow before the emperor. He would not bow before the emperor. And John is the one and only apostle who lived to be older. Most all the rest of them gave their lives as martyrs. So you and I, we think about suffering on occasion. We have a problem. We have an issue. We have things that take place in our lives. And yet, God is there if you will allow Him to be in your life. John says in verse 11, I saw heaven standing open. And there before me was the white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. I am not for war, but I am not a pacifist either. If you're a pacifist here this morning, I want you to run that through the Word of God and see how we are, see what's up. And here's what I mean by that. A young man that um, was in our church family a few years ago, place I was serving. And uh, he had become a pacifist. He was an honor scholar, scholar student. He had become a pacifist while he was in college. And I asked him, I said, you know, what, 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 is, what has come upon you? What teaching have you received that has caused you to come to this conclusion? And he shared with me. I won't go into detail. But I asked him this question. He was engaged to be married. And they were, this was the spring and they were going to be married in June. And I looked at right now and I said, are you telling me a group of people would come and harm your fiancé and you would stand there and do nothing? See, that's how you run theory and philosophy through reality. Amen. See, and the Word of God says, you and I, men, we're to protect our families. We're to take care of our families. Not just go to work, come home, sit on the sofa and watch Monday Night Football. Some of you don't watch Monday Night Football, you go, hey, whoo, I didn't do that one, great. Right? Or anything else for that matter. We have a responsibility then as Christian men standing before a holy God to love our wives, love our children, and to take care of them. We see here the rider is called Faithful and True. We all know who this rider is. It's Jesus himself. It's Jesus. If you ever missed that before, don't miss it now. It is Jesus. He is faithful and true. Folks, when all the other things, when all is said and done, Jesus will be the one left standing. Amen. When all the world philosophies, all the governments, all the isms of the world have been left in the dust, God Almighty through His Son will be the only one left standing. If you've ever studied the book of Daniel, you know there are five great kings, or four great kings, and then the fifth is that one that God Himself cut out of the stone. It's that fifth great kingdom, and it is the one that lasts forever. So where does that leave us today? That's great. It puts chills up our spine and all of those things, but how does that relate to where you're living right now? Folks, that gives you hope. That gives you hope. I hope. That gives you hope. I'm very, very confident it will if you will allow God to speak to your heart. Because Jesus is the truth. Do you have a little Jesus this morning? you have a little Jesus this morning? You've been living a life where Jesus is kind of, sort of, okay and all that. Well, I'm telling you, my dear friends, everybody that's ever been born on the planet and even those that have gone to their graves long time ago are going to stand before Yeshua, Messiah, the Lord's 
own son. Look at his eyes. They're blazing like fire in verse 12. On his head are many crowns. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican here this morning. I am neither. I'm a Christian. Everything that I live, everything I do, I have to run through my experience with Jesus Christ. And if you're not doing that, I want to invite you to do that. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. Be like him. Be like him. And if you're in the Word of God, you begin to understand who he is. And God the Father is shaping you as we speak to be like his dear son. And then we go to churches and we worship and we come and we see these Christians, these so-called Christians. Why would anybody come because of you? Why would anybody want Jesus because of you? It's a good question. I have to ask that myself about me, and I do. See, I'm not your judge. I'm here to encourage you along your way. And you're not to judge another person. From the standpoint of Brother Ken this, this week in Wednesday night Bible study, if you are here, you missed it. A better translation of that judging is thou shalt not condemn. Judging is a good thing if it's done in the Spirit of God. That's right. See, that's how I know what's right and wrong. How do you learn what's right and wrong if you didn't have some judgment? Amen. So you understand. And if we see a brother or sister that's going down the wrong path, we love them enough to share with them. Not, not broadcasting. But we share with them in love that they will get back on the track following Jesus. We just did the footprints of Jesus. We just said the footprints of Jesus. And here the footprints of Jesus. Take a look. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood. Twofold here in verse 13. He's dipped in his own blood. But he's also the blood of those who opposed him. Are you there this morning? Are you listening this morning? Are you opening your mind up before God? And his name is the Word of God. His name is the Word of God. John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And also we understand from Scripture that the Word is God. He has been, He is, and He is to come. We, as His people, should be understanding of that. The armies of heaven were following Him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Are you still struggling trying to clean yourself up? Are you still trying to clean yourself up outside of Jesus? Folks, I can help you. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Come to Jesus. Humble yourself. Matthew 7 says this. Ask, seek, and knock. For if you ask, it will be given unto you. If you seek, it shall be revealed. And if you knock, the door will be opened. It's not a mic Sundays on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays or only these office hours. But it says any time you do that, those three things, ask, seek, and knock, God will answer. Are you seeking this morning? What are you seeking? The Word says in 2 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face. Is your prayer life like that? Is your prayer life seeking his face? Because if it's not, no wonder your life's empty. No wonder your life is what it is. Shallow. And God wants to deepen so much more for you because he loves you. And folks, hear me. Share with you a moment ago. I was in my 30s before I ever started dawning on me how much God loved me. I was saved at 21. I knew he's Jesus. I knew he was Savior. I knew I needed one. And at 21, my life changed totally from where it had been. Totally. Not because of anything I did except my acceptance of him. 
Man, that was strange for the folks I went to college with. Yeah, buddy. Pulled up and I said, King, what'd you do this summer? What? They saw a difference in me the moment I set foot on campus. It wasn't me. It's the power of Almighty God. That's the deal. Are you allowing Him in your life? Are you giving Him space in your life? Are you giving Him permission to have His way with you? For Jesus said this, those who try to save their lives will lose them. But if you're willing to lose your life, it doesn't mean be killed physically. It means that if you're willing to lose your life in Him, then you will have life and life to the abundant. And it's up to us. And it's the same Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the love of God. But let me show you here in Revelation 19 the pairing of the people. Did you ever read Matthew 25? See, it's not you and I that separate the sheep and the goat, thank God. We miss one. I mean, let me show you this morning. What if it were you that was left behind? Well, God's just, He just, He just doesn't, doesn't love. What? Are you listening to what? You're listening to the enemy. And the enemy's going to come, as John 10.10 10 says, to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life to the abundant. Amen. Our choice. Life is full of choices. And it's awfully difficult. We're so distracted, America. We're so distracted. That's why the Word says, slow down, be still, and know that I am God. Not man. He is God. Take a look, folks. The armies. We're going to be riding with them on this day. We're riding with him, the armies. I'm okay with the armies. Some, it may be some angelic beings there. If you look through the study that we've been in, you see plenty of angelic beings. But this day we're riding. You have received your reward, Christian. At this point in time, you've received your reward. Where's your heart this morning? Because Jesus said that's where your treasure is going to be as well. You put your heart here. You stay here. We're just talking in the back a little bit. Thank God when we, we're sojourners here. You know what that means? That means we're just going through. This is not our permanent location. This is not where we're going to live for eternity. Thank God. We're not in this fallen nature forever, and we must be overcomers. The Word says, how do we become overcomers? By the power of the Spirit of God. So many are still trying to figure this Christian thing out. We just have not done this one thing, and that is surrender to Him. <laughs> surrender to Him. Surrender to Him. We don't surrender too well, Americans. We're then we're going to fight every last little tooth and nail. We're going to fight every little all the way. And Jesus is still there saying, come to me. How many times do we hear a message or we have a Sunday school lesson or a good study or our own personal devotion and we come back and immediately we're tested and we say, Lord, why would you test me? Because he's trying to take you to a higher level with himself. But it's not a higher level intellectually. It's a higher level in the realm of faith. It's impossible, the book of Hebrews says, to please God with that faith. That doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to believe, I'm going to believe, I'm going to believe. Surrender. And let the Spirit step with you. Let me share with you one more time. Too many of us are praying. It's good. It's a good thing. But we're waiting for God, and God has spoken to us and said, step back by faith. Take a step. Come on. You can do it. I remember teaching my kids how to swim. Been there? I wasn't one of those mean dads. 
I had those people my father wasn't like this, like God. I know those people are, come on, come on. <laughs> you know, do that to you. Don't ever do that to a child. Don't ever do that to a child. I hope God does that to you. Good lesson. I remember teaching them. And how you had to get them going. Had to get them going a little bit. Come on, come on. And you stayed there and you kept calling, but you were there with them. You see, that's a great picture of God saying, come on, believer. Come on, child of God. Come on, child. Come on, my child. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Just come on. But you've got to make the motion yourself to do it. You've got to determine in yourself that you're going to step by, by faith and come to Him. Satan is coming against your faith. I know some of you, most of you. But we get all fussed up about having to pray for our loved ones, don't you? <laughs> Tell me a story in Sunday school and church this morning. You get tired of praying for them, don't you? Now one has guts enough to say, yep, amen. amen. You got it. I get tired of praying for someone too. But you know, the Lord says, where would you be without those prayers that I had those people offer for you when you were 12 and 15 and 30 and 40 and so forth? See, we don't get tired. We keep giving them to Him. If you're tired this morning, it shows you you're trying to do this Christian thing in your own strength. Yeah. If you're exhausted spiritually this morning, you're trying way too hard. Surrender. Give it up. Let Him have His power in you. It's a great way. Yeah. It's the only way to really follow Jesus the way He wants us to follow Him. Look at this mouth sharp sword strikes down the nations. You'll rule them with an iron scepter. Maybe <coughs> you've studied this before and you go, wow, he seems so harsh. He seems so cruel. No, my dear friends, you don't get it. This is the battle of Armageddon. This is the battle of Armageddon where only Jesus stands. And you know that he doesn't even lift a finger. He doesn't even have to lift a finger against these armies of the world that have assigned themselves and aligned themselves against them. Folks, that's power. And that same power is available to you today. Let me tell you what I don't want to happen when I arrive on the other side of the river. I don't want to look around and miss one of my children. I don't want to look around and think what happened. Do you think we're just going through life? What's on TV today? What's happening in the news today? Same dumb stuff was yesterday. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got all these news channels. And have you noticed? You could miss a week and come back and catch up, just like you folks who watch those soap operas. Oh, we can get those. Whoa! Don't trust them now, happy boy. Hey, you can you catch up in about 15 minutes of what's happened in the past year? You haven't missed a thing. And yet, I don't have time to pray. If you don't have time to pray, folks, you are putting your family in jeopardy. Amen. Thank you. In jeopardy. But this jeopardy is not the one on whatever it is, Channel 8. This jeopardy is eternal. And look at this rider. This rider loves you. He's the one who went to the cross. This rider loves you and wants you to make that right decision now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Wayne Browning's blessed. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. My brother in 49 had the same identical thing Wayne Browning did. They didn't catch it in time. It went septic on him and 49 years old. He's gone. I was substitute teaching over in Hamilton County. They called me. Mr. King, you have a call from this hospital? I said, what? That goes to you, right? You're thinking, my God, what is it? What is it, Lord? They said, you better get here now. By the time I could get somebody to cover my class. Get in the car and go across town. Gone. Gone. My dear friends, that's the way this life works that we're in. You and I need to be prayed up. We need to be the prayer warriors for our family. 
even those lost loved ones of yours, even those in-laws, and dear God, even those at homes. You got it? My goodness gracious. You know, you just not breathe. They're there. We need to be in prayer for them. I want you to see something here. Jesus is going to rule them with an iron scepter. These are the people that have rejected him. You know any? You watch any on TV? You see any in your movies? You see any of your ball players? You see any of your NASCAR drivers? You see any of these, all these folks there? The woods are full of them. They're lining themselves up against Jesus. He treads the wine crap of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. Do you understand God has a wrath? You know what God's wrath is against? Sin. Sin. Not the sinner, but the sin. For the book of Romans teaches us clearly, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we see, I want you to see on his robe and on his thigh has written the name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is the true God. This is the true Lord. And I hope in your Bible it's capital King, capital Kings, capital and, capital Lord, and capital of Lords. Because there's none like him. There's none like him. Folks, there are people who will follow the path. And even though the footprints God has made sure, the footprints of Jesus are illuminated by His Word. His Word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. Are you in the Word? Be in the Word of God. And please follow up on what I'm sharing with you this morning. Don't just go look mine and sink it. Look it up. Look it up. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds come. For the great supper of God. This is planned, my dear friends. This is planned and it is happening just as God said it. Jesus said in Matthew 24, the first thing he said to those that asked him three straight questions about when is he coming? When will this gigantic edifice of the temple of God in Jerusalem when will it fall? When will it be raised up? And he said, the first thing out of his mouth was see that you're not deceived. My dear friends, I love you enough to tell you some of you are deceived still. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ and surrendered your life to him, you are deceived. You are deceived. Stop being deceived, Jesus said, and come unto the truth. Doesn't mean that you're going to be a monk doesn't mean that you're going to have to do a funny haircut or have some old black robe. It doesn't mean any of that. He's come to give you life and life to the abundant. We'll accept it. Doesn't end well for these folks who have rejected him. Look, these birds are going to have a feast. They're, in the valley, they're right there in the Valley of Megiddo. I saw a picture of the Valley of Megiddo this week from a, from a little higher elevation. It is plush, it is green, it is gorgeous, and they're going to gather there. Why? Because that's what God said. You can take God's word, forget going to the bank. You can take God's word into eternity with you, and he will set you free. Take a quick look so you may eat of the flesh of these kings, generals, mighty men. They're riders in the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. Does that mean the believer? No. No, this is not a war of the believers, God coming to judge believers. That's taking place. This is the one that all the armies of the earth are gathered against Jesus. And Jesus comes to put it down for the last time. It's a great thing. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to when Jesus rules. I'm not going to have no more elections, thank God. I'm not going to waste time in some dumb debates. We're not going to have 27 people that can't even get 1% of 1% of a vote. We've got to spend money on that. It's going to be a great day. This King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he's been selected and elected long before you and I ever came along. I want to wrap this up very quickly this morning. Bear with me. Put your seatbelt on and let's roll. 
Verse 19, I saw the beast. Who's the beast? Look, Revelation, I'll give you some words to write down. Revelation 13, write it down. You'll be introduced to the beast if you haven't. He's the one who is called the Antichrist. He's the one who's aligned his kingdom in diametrically opposition of Jesus Christ. The kings of the earth have followed him. Their armies gathered to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. Are you telling me this morning you have not seen that the war has already been declared on Christ and his people? Amen. Have you not seen it already? This culture in which we're in, we, our children can't even say the name of Jesus in public school. My God, what type of land are we in? We're delusion. In a delusion, my dear friends. But Paul says over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, for those who continue to reject Christ, God will give them a great delusion. They will not be able to discern the truth from the false. Right now you and I have that authority within us. He is the Holy Spirit and He will lead us and guide us to all truth if we'll let Him. But in verse 20, the beast was captured. The great day. The beast is captured. Look, the beast and the false prophet. And if you're sitting here this morning and you don't know any of this, you need to come to Bible study. Let me tell you one thing, folks. Some of you maybe, maybe don't get this. They don't pay me any more money here if 50 show up or 10. I would rather have 500 because we'll share the word of God. And then you go and you share the light with all those you love. Because I don't know all those folks you know. It's not my job. I'm not some hired gun. I'm here to encourage you, lead you, guide you to a deeper walk with Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Then you go do the same. Oh no, that's the preacher. No, that ain't the preacher. You don't want me working on your head and brain surgery. Trust me. Trust me. You ever play that little, little game? What is it? Operation. Operation. Man, I kicked that thing out to grow rods there. What are you talking about? You don't want me operating. Matthew Long, let me tell you, one of fear of mine, I had nightmares about this, brother. I'm laying on the operating table. I need Sage Reed. One of my students looks over me and says, Hi, Coach King, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love why I pray. <laughs> I love why I pray. I don't know if that was from God or just one of my weird dreams. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Woke me up. Mm. Beasts and the false prophet have captured, look, those that perform the miracles and signs on his behalf with these signs of what he did, he deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. If you don't worship God this morning, you worship the image. If you don't worship Jesus Christ this morning and in your life tomorrow morning and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and every day you live, you are falling prey to false religion. <coughs> you are falling prey to false teaching. And my dear friends, our God, as you can see in this scene, hates false religion. Take a look at what happened. The two of them thrown a line into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. It's over in Revelation 21. You want to look at that on your Bible study this week? It's a great thing. The rest of them who? The armies of the world, the armies of the Antichrist, the armies of the beast, they were all killed with a sword. What sword? The one that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Revelation 14 says this. For 180 miles, running the entire length of Israel, there will be blood to the horse's bridle. That's Armageddon. That's it. That's it. Say, so, well, what does that have to do with us today? Folks, if this doesn't help you see that God loves you, 
And once you say, once you're born again, once you follow him, I don't know what can help you. My dear friends, our children, they're growing up in an, or a society that is godless, but it's worse than godless. What could be worse than godless? They have a false god. Lucifer is the prince of the power of this earth. Do you get it? We're in a battle of our lives, my dear friends. And some of you have a young adults in your families, and they're lost. And they're going on the road to hell as we speak. My dear friends, they may not listen to you anymore. They may be tired of your voice. Here's what you do. You get down on your hands and knees before Almighty God. Amen. Humble yourself before Him. Seek His face and lift them to Him. Asking, Father, send someone today. Send someone today to help them see you. Send someone, O oh Lord, that they will listen to and accept you before it's everlasting or too late. Amen. See, at the end of Revelation 19, we've got a couple more chapters, but the book's closed. And that day is coming. My dear friends, Folks all around us that need to hear Jesus. All around us. Wouldn't be the church that counts beans. Wouldn't be the church that, man, we can count some beans, brother now. No. 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 Now, I'm fully well aware. I've lived long enough to understand that numbers represent people. Don't lose sight of the peeps. Don't lose sight of the people. Because that's who God loves. That's who God loves. And if you and I don't reach out to them, let me ask you a question. Who do you think he is? Who do you think he is? Atheist? Ask those Muslims the next time you meet one. Hey, where, where's that hospital of mercy? Where's that great university? Where's that, where's that hospital for the little children? They're not there, that's why. God is moving in your heart today. As I close in prayer this morning, don't you let God pass you by. Don't let God pass you by this morning. If you're here seeking a miracle, you come down, our prayer altars with a wide slap open. They're here for you. You've got lost in your family. Pray for them now. Well, I don't want to be here until 1 o'clock, folks. Really? Really? <coughs> Why? Well, uh, really? You come. You do business with God. If you need to accept Christ as your Savior today, today's the day. If you need to rededicate your life, right? Someone do that last week. Rededicate their life to Jesus. Wow. Whatever your decision is today, make it today while we are here together. And allow the Lord to lead you, and don't worry about what those folks think. Well, I don't want to put anybody on my aisle. On my row, I don't want to on my row upset with me. Get real. And you come down and you surrender to Jesus today. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. That is truly sharper than a two-edged sword. Cuts right to the heart of the matter, O oh God. Cuts right to the heart of the matter. I pray for each soul here today that they will surrender themselves afresh and anew. Maybe some for the very first time, Father. That they might come to know you as Lord and Savior and their lives will be eternally different. Eternally different, O oh God. And Father, give each one of us the patience, the endurance, the wisdom as we might pray for our children and grandchildren and pray them into your kingdom today. Father, we love you and we surrender to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.